Hi, good morning, uh, everybody. Appreciate you being here and being on. Uh, well, obviously, we're very excited with the <clears throat> announcement of the schedule and moving forward with a commitment to, you know, to play the season. I know our has indicated that they wanted an opportunity to play as long as it's safe. And our presidents and everybody did a great job and our directors over the last several days, um, you know, working through this process. So, um, you know, we appreciate you being on. And with that, I'll open it up for questions. Scott Fritchen. Yeah, Gene. Uh, one of the stories of Sports Illustrated had last night it said that uh, the Big 12, in essence, kind of saved college football with with its decision. Can you walk me through the last 24 hours, just how that decision came to be? A great question. I don't know that we've saved college football necessarily. I mean, um, you know, we still have a long ways to go between now and September 12th. Um, and, and certainly we need to do our best to stay, keep these kids safe, whether it's, um, you know, making sure we're testing them and keeping them um, you know, from the mask wearing and the social distancing and all those things. And back. Um, but I, I do think it was a, a great step to say, you know, we're committed to our student athletes because when we talk to them and coaches talk to our, their, our athletes, they want to play, but they want to play with the, with the opportunity safe. And I think over the last, you know, really more than 24 hours, probably the last several days, between, you know, presidents talking and us as ADs and just talking, we really wanted to say, what do we need to do to be safe? And, and our medical advisors, uh, uh, Dr. Goroff here at K-State has been awesome. And then all the team docs have really worked through together to come up, what is the best way we can continue to move forward and, and do it safely? And that's what over the last, really the 24 hours is where they, you know, yesterday in particular had the conversations with many doctors beyond just our 12 doctors we had additional cardiologists, we had pulmonologists, we had infectious disease docs. And then after, you know, probably several, I would say probably an hour of conversation, they, they kind of came up with the additional protocols that we put into place. So uh, it's been an interesting, I learned a lot in the last several days uh, in words that I can't even pronounce, to be honest with you. <laughs> and just in the last hour, I mean, the phone is blowing up, people wanting to know, can you know, will they be able to attend games? You had an interview on 580 Talk Radio um, probably about 10 days ago talking about the fact that um, the operations staff was working around the clock trying to plan. So what are those plans that right now? Yeah, they've been actually working for a while, Scott, to be honest with you. And staff, our marketing staff, our green staff, our um, Ahern Fund members, the plans together, waiting to work with our county to wait to get that um, you know, go ahead for fans we're going to be allowed to have. We do know it's going to be limited. We just don't know what that limit's going to be. And, and until they, we plans in place, and hopefully in the next few days, uh, we'll kind of put out operationally what we'll be doing, even if we don't a fan number, but we're still kind of uh, finalizing that and, and, and tweaking that. Uh, but the county health department folks in the county are the ones who give us that that number and that go ahead at some point. Thank you. Ellis. Yeah. Hey, Gene. Good to see you. Um, going off that same kind of question, if the county doesn't change their current restrictions, which I believe is at 2,000 fans, is there any kind of waiver or anything you could do to get around that, or would you have to adhere to it? Well, that's kind of what we're talking with them about, uh, Kellis, to be honest with you, um, is, is what are our options and what are the procedures we have to put into place and go through uh, to get the approval to have more than 2,000 fans in a venue. So I know they're working on a lot of uh, uh, their end in terms of the county health department and our county commissioners, campus president Myers, our provost. We've run it all by uh, their leadership here, our our cabinet so, um we've got what we think is a good plan and we will get that to them and if they need additional feedback to say well what are you gonna do about this or that we will certainly have that in place so we were kind of going to have that this week uh, but we didn't know what the big 12 decision was going to be so we wanted to and now we'll go ahead and work for, uh, continue to move forward with the county and try to get a number and get our processes in front of them 
So we, we know what we need to do 2000. And given just how much things have shifted lately, has your level in playing football this season changed with it? <laughs> It's like a, it's like roller coaster. It's up and down. Uh, right now, it's up, and 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 even really the conversation last Cox, um, and and with our presidents and the ads, they we're we're committed to try to play football. I'm committed to make sure we're going to do it safe, and that our athletes are not going to be in any sort of additional harm. And if you know, at some point between now and September, there's tell us something different and and we will will certainly adjust but uh, i'm confident that we all know at least in the big 12 or ad's our coaches we want to move forward to play for you kurtz yeah, hey jay can talk to you um yeah do you feel like with the the big 10's announcement kind of the way all of that played out that there was an element of of them back well trying to put pressure on you guys, the rest of the leagues across college football to, to join with them? I don't know if it was, um, you know, direct pressure. But I don't know that any Big Ten or Pac-12 AD. And, but I think there's there was, there was pressure um, that if those two conferences, we were all were going to have to make that decision. And that's one of the things we talked about is we can't, necessarily worry about how they came to their decision because there are different circumstances in the in the Pac-12 for instance the, the city of LA and those areas are much more much more cases much more issues to deal with the Big Ten they've got Rutgers and Maryland out on the east coast that have some additional issues so we said what's for us whatever decision we make needs to be what's best for the Big 12 and not worry about what the Big Ten, because they came their decision for different reasons than we did. And so we felt pretty confident that we had to make a decision on for our student athletes, our coaches, our programs to decide what's the best for the Big 12. And when we got there, then we worked through the process from that point. I know Commissioner Bowlesby had just mentioned non-conference teams will be subject to the same level of testing that you guys have. Is that something you guys will have to pay for in the case of Arkansas State? Well, uh, that's a good question. And we actually talked to Arkansas State this morning, and they had planned on doing a test uh, because that's what was in the, uh, the NCAA uh, protocols. But we told them now, if we, was, we sent them our contract, we actually said they would need to follow the Big 12 protocol of testing. And that's now changed from one to, to three. And we offered to help, help them with that, so desired. And I think we probably probably will for just because we want to get that 10th game and and but we are our, our, the other thing is our want to know that they're tested right they want to know that they're coming in negative and so again that commitment to our student athletes to be safe that if we had to pay for those extra two tests and do you imagine it be any kind of a challenge to get to three times a week testing whether that's financially or just logistically well, it's going to be both. I mean, it's not, obviously not cheap. You know, when we talk to uh, Dr. Girl and, and, and our medical folks, we're hoping that those numbers come down and the types of tests that can get the reliability. Uh, one test per week will be the current PCR test. And then we're looking at the antigen testing and, and maybe a, a swab of some, of, of some kind. Again, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a medical doctor, but we think those tests will be available by the time September rolls around and that there'll be a faster turnaround for those. I know one requirement is one of those three has to be a PCR, and the other two will be either an antigen testing or some type of uh, nasal swab. Appreciate it, Gene, thanks. No problem, thanks. Good to see you. Cameron. Gene, going off of the Arkansas State, uh, you talked about that. Um, they were chosen as the one non-conference opponent. Uh, what was the decision like to choose Arkansas State? And was there really any other um, teams entertained at all? What process kind of take to choose Arkansas State out of the Sun Belt? It actually happened pretty quickly um, as the as the conferences us started to go to conference only. A lot of things began to open up, and obviously we were still committed to try to play both. Depending on what happened, and then of course the FCS decided to. Uh, so that we, that's when we lost 
uh, North Dakota, and we were still kind of waiting for the MAC. But in the meantime, we were starting to get calls from the Arkansas State and other teams. There were probably three or four to us about the potential to play. Arkansas State was one of the earlier ones, and we just kept that conversation going. And once we realized we were going to go conference plus one, and then we knew Mac, the Buffalo, and, and North Dakota were out. Then we started uh, in the conversation with our Arkansas State being ones, and it moved pretty quickly, and we were able to get an agreement. It worked out for them and us. So one of the big things going on this week was talking about uh, teams wanting to join in conferences, and those teams, I was really talking about that. Um, Commissioner Bullsby uh, said that the Big 12 didn't really, hasn't really entertained any of those ideas. I just, was just wondering, what's your opinion on all of that talk? Well, I think it, it I think it's really, um, appro not appropriate, it's not the right word, but I don't think it's really going to happen. I mean, we're all committed at least in five to some pretty strict conference agreements and contracts and television contracts. And so, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if Nebraska even wanted. Now, Notre Dame is a little different because I think there was a relationship with the AC and they are an independent. So other than their NBC contract, you know, for us to, you know, bring somebody else in, we would have some serious contractual issues to deal with. And for Nebraska or somebody to leave their conference uh, would be, would be highly unusual. So I think it's, um, you know, social media really accurate. Thank you. Harold. Yeah. Hope you're doing good. Um, good, how are you doing? good how are you all doing? right. Hey, uh, on the telecoms with Bob Bowles, but you just referred to the, the medical stuff that they had in place was, and I'm just using his words, garbage 60 days ago, as opposed to uh, now. Uh, what did you guys learn that, you know, made you finally realize that what you had was garbage in place and then I have a follow up after that? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing it was twofold. I think our doctors and Dr. Girl and I, Dr. Girl, if you know, he's our K-State uh, doctor here on campus, but he's also been one of the leading ones, advisors for the Big 12 and the Power Five. So I've been fortunate and our medical staff and coaches have been fortunate to talk to uh, Kyle pretty regularly about where we were going through the process. And he started kind of mentioning a few weeks ago that he felt we probably needed to test more than once in terms of testing for COVID. And we've known about the cardiac concerns about how the virus does attack or can potentially attack the heart. And again, he kind of meant let's, let's, and we have been doing EKG testing and echo testing of our kids that have already tested. But a couple of days ago, he said, Gene, I'm, uh, we need to take the next step, which is a, a cardiac MRI. And so, on the call that we had yesterday, we had we had a couple of cardiologists. We, like I said, we had pulmonologists. We had a bunch of doctors outside of the Big 12 team doctors that really kind of enlightened us and talked us through the issues and the potential issues if a COVID positive athlete would have potential on their heart. Now the studies are small, the data isn't there, but we didn't want to take the test. And like any other athlete we have, like we have a very strict protocol to return to play um, you know if somebody were to have a serious neck injury or serious back injury we have some pretty strict protocols before we allow those athletes to come back to play and that was kind of the biggest issue is look guys even though we don't know for sure we want to make sure before we allow them to come back to play that they feel safe that their family feels safe and that we've done everything we can and I think that's where the comfort level of the president started to grow that if we do these tests we'll feel better about whether the athlete is safe to play and can return to play. My other question to you was, uh, obviously there's been talk of Collegiate Players Association and we saw on your campus, your players have a voice and can speak up uh, in June with all the, the, my question to you about that is, do you feel like a player association is coming? Would you be okay with that if they kind of had a, 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 not necessarily a union or it's an amateur association, but do you guys take into account much more to listen to? You know, I, I, I've actually applauded all of our athletes, not only here at K-State, but just collectively through the Big 12. I've not, obviously not talked to any Big 10 or, or Pac-12 athlete. And, and we've done a great job. We be in the conference, uh, Bob and, and some of our leadership ADs, we've been talking to our – we've had two calls of, of two athletes from each of the Big 12 schools to talk about 
where we are, whether it's COVID uh, or anything else. And, and they have been talking on their own. And so we had a call this week about kind of, you know, what they were thinking, the extension of the clock, uh, keeping their scholarship if they opt. Really good conversations. And so I, I encourage that. And have, we have in our campus, we obviously have the Student Athlete Advisory Committee and leadership council beyond just as captain. So we're kind of already, but we're encouraging them to bring those voices, feel more comfortable coming to us as leaders and administrators saying, hey, this is what we want or these are our concerns because I think we need to hear that and we'll do everything we can to make sure that their experience here is even better. Now, we've done a lot of great things, but there's things we have concerns about. So I would, I, I encourage them to speak out and share their concerns. And if we can fix it, great, but we also have to have honest conversations with them and say, you know, guys, we're probably not, not gonna be able to have TV revenue. I mean, that's just, you know, but there are we can do and t more testing and things that we put in a place were things that those athletes gave us feedback on. And I think it's, I think it's great. Thank you. Tell us. Team D. Do you have any – you'll handle the canceled games yet? Do you want to reschedule Buffalo and North Dakota? Yeah, we have – I'll uh, be underbuilt um, just because – just haven't had time, and I know they've got – but I have talked to both the AD at Buffalo and, and UND and have talked about years. We haven't um, solidified anything, and, you know, we haven't – in terms of the guarantee and all that stuff, that's kind of off the table because they – canceled on us and we cancel on them but i'm fine play both of them at some point i just we just really haven't looked at each other's so uh, i don't think we even have yeah. an option until 2026 at this point so but yeah if they want to play us and it works we'd be happy to play them again or put them back uh, on my, my last question is i was a little curious does the league have any policy or procedure set up if you do have to make up a game he handled that's one thing we're still working through uh, with our coaches in terms of what's going to require a cancel. So if, you know, what's the percentage of athletes um, that may not be available to play? Uh, that's the one thing we haven't finalized yet, uh, but it'll be a decision. And so say, for instance, we're going into, you know, the Oklahoma State game and they come back and say, we've got, we've hit the threshold, whatever the, threshold is we can't play because we have this many kids positive then the way the schedule options we have the two bye weeks and then we obviously have the additional week at the end of the schedule that we maybe can make up those games down the road um, once they go through their whatever their quarantine or isolation period is so it's going to be a conference decision and it's going to be you know consistent across each team but we had thresholds going to be it Scott Fritchin. Yeah, Gene, as a member of the Big 12 subcommittee for schedule development, uh, uh, was it your recommendation that K-State should open on the road at Oklahoma? <laughs> Trust me, Scott, I've seen some of them where they had this at Oklahoma State and in Texas. I've, been, I've probably seen a dozen or more versions. Um, but that's the one thing on being on these committees, you, you kind of got to take your stuff out and just look at what's best for the conference. And this is my first time. And normally we don't even have input on the schedule, right? Normally we get the schedule and that's the schedule, but because of uniqueness, we had this subcommittee and we went and the biggest thing was talking about what they could collapse and common opponents. So if you did have a delayed game or, um, I don't know if you saw where it could actually be held and not even started till October 3rd if we had to and still get all the games in. We have a scheduler net for us, and that, those are all things that I'd never seen before. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I think this is year, I don't know, 16 or 18 out of 20 that we've been on the road for the first. So, I have to kind of not focus on that and focus on the bigger picture. Thank you. That's time for a couple more, Ryan Black. Good morning, Gene. How you doing? Good, Ryan. How you hey, doing? Hey, Gene. It's kind of a follow-up to what D. Scott just asked. Is you know I've seen a lot of fans curious about it, and I am as well. What's the reason that you guys had to reshuffle the schedule in terms of the Big Twelve? 
of like why not has had with and I know you had to maybe build in the the off weeks, but why why are you guys now at Oklahoma instead of starting at West Virginia? for instance. Yeah, that, it's, a, it's a great question. And again, this is where our scheduling guru um, really helpful. And I didn't, like I said, learning, going through it for the first time, there was a lot of things that I'd never even heard them talk about, like being able to collapse the schedule and being able to have the opponents kind of spaced together. And then we have, you know, core principles of scheduling and we have some soft principles and then sure we met as many of those as we could. So when they put it together, we would get the games. Like I said, I, I probably saw a dozen different versions uh, of all of us that we were supposed to have at home and the opponents we were supposed to have on the road. So you didn't have to play somebody two years in a row. So that was obviously something that was important. But how they figured out the collapsing and who played was really critical in us being able to have adjustments during the course of the year if, if there were uh, cancellations or postponements. Each time we looked at one, there would be uh, until we got to this one, there was one or two teams that were really not meeting the core principles. And until we got to this, it met most of the core principles and a majority of the soft principles. So that's why we came up to keep adjusting until we got there. It was a, it was a lot of conversation. Last words. Yeah, Gene, was, was there ever a moment in the last, 72 hours or four days where you felt like the tide was turning to the point where for the big 12 football was going to be over. Yeah, there was several, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, when the big 10 and the, and the pac 12 came out, it was feeling you know, that ominous. So we, um, there were, you know, there were a few of us that were pretty strong that wanted to do everything we could. Um, there were other ADs that, you know, just started to think it's really what we needed to do. And then that, that's why the call yesterday, I think, was so helpful with everybody it was because of the, the numbers of really talented and smart cardiologists and folks that kind of helped us through our ability to play safely for athletes if, if we did these additional protocols. And, and I think by the end of the call last night, um, most people were feeling pretty good about it. And felt that we were making the best decision. And, and I think that's what it came down to is, is this the best decision for the Big 12 and our student athletes? And are we giving them enough information where they feel like they can walk out on the field every day and be safe? And again, if it, something changes, we have the ability to pivot and, and, and not continue to move forward. But right now, we're pretty excited about being able to get to this point. And just one quick address this a little bit, but we we guys have to pay any cancellation fees like for the North Dakota or Buffalo games. No, we will yeah. not. Both those are off the table, and it was again it was mutual agreement. Play us, but we didn't. We probably had to figure that out. But both of the ads look. Let's just wipe it off the table. If we can play later, great. If not, we'll just we'll just call it good. So we will not have to pay those okay. cancellations. Thanks, Gene. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.